The Real McCoys, starring Walter Brennan, created by Irving Pincus. Want you to meet the family known as the Real McCoys. That's Grandpappy Amos, the head of the clan. He roars like a lion, but he's gentle as a lamb. And now here's Luke, who beams with joy since he may take Mrs. Luke McCoy. From West Virginia they came to stay in sunny California. Oh, Grandpappy Amos and the girls and the boys of the family known as the Real McCoys. Like we'll find out soon enough. Well, I guess you're all here. Grab your chef's a chair. Well, I guess the meeting can begin. Kind of looks like we got ourselves in some trouble. That corn crop we was figuring on is ruined on account of the dry spill. And we was counting on that money. So till the tomatoes comes in, we're going to be, well, <laughs> We're going to be a little short of cash. Well, how short? Well, look, you got the bank book. You read the balance here. Luke, you ain't reading. That's it. <laughs> you mean we're broke? Well, no, not exactly. We'll be getting some money day to day from milk and eggs and stuff, but that ain't going to pay the bills. Well, seeing as how we're short of cash, there ain't but one thing to do. Right. We all apply for credit cards. <laughs> no, you ninny, we ain't gonna do nothing of the kind. They tell me to think American, and when I do, I get in trouble. <laughs> There's only one thing to do. We'll all take part-time jobs to tide us over. Great idea. I can get a job making deliveries for Clark's grocery store. And I can work in the mop shop after school. The knit shop's always offered me part-time work. Yeah, well, I already checked the feed store. I can work there evenings. I can work for Mr. Johnston. I know he's looking for extra help. Now, Pepino, there's no call for you to do that. But I'll be happy to do it. But it ain't as if... Hey, never mind now, Kate. Seeing as how we ain't paying him for a spell, the least we can do is leave him be happy. <laughs> well, then we're all set. I guess the meeting's over. Hey, now, hold it. Hold your horses. Just a minute now. Ain't you forgetting something? Ain't you forgetting somebody else can get himself a job? Somebody like me? Oh, now, Grandpa, we're all working. Now, look, it's only fitting and proper that the head of the house do a share. Well, uh, what do you figure on doing? Well, ain't made up my mind yet. I'm gonna look over the field and, and take my pick. But sometimes it ain't that easy to... I mean... Mean what? It, well, I think what Kate's trying to say is, uh, uh, jobs ain't that easy to find uh, sometimes. Yeah, you can see it all over your faces. You figure I can't get a job on account I'm too old, because I can't read or write. Now, Grandpa. You all got me sitting in a rocking chair, ain't you? Twiddling my thumbs, waiting for you all to come home from work. But when it comes time to compare pay envelopes, you'll find out I'm still the head of this family. <laughs> What's that writing say? Ace Employment Agency. Hey, what does that say? Jobs wanted. Wanted? Yes, sir. W-A-N-T-E-D. Wanted. <laughs> I just wanted to be sure there was learning you right in school. <laughs> <laughs> well, Amos, what are you doing around here? Things going so bad at the farm that you're looking for another job, huh? Now, you listen to me, Mac McGinnis. Yeah, I told you, you should have let Luke run the place for you. Well, for your information, you big blabbermouth, everything's running just great at the farm. Yeah, then why are you going into the employment office? Why? Why? I'll tell you why. Things is going so good at the farm, I mean, here to hire a couple of new hands. That's why. <laughs> is there any other type of work you've had specific training in? Any other type of work? Now, listen, son, I've been running a farm for over 50 years, and when you run a farm, you just got to know just about everything. 
account. Perhaps you'd like to read over the listings yourself? Well, now, if I wanted to read, I'd go to the library. Now, look, stop all this dilly-dallying. Let's, let's see you come up with something. Oh, you know anything about the lumber and hardware business? Mm, of course I do. I know all these to know about it. Well, Mr. McGinnis next door here is looking for a part-time salesman. McGinnis? That's right. Well, as far as I'm concerned, he's still looking. I wouldn't work for McGinnis if it was the last job in the county. Mr. McCoy, I'm afraid we don't have anything right now for which you're qualified. The fact is, most employers are looking for... younger men. Younger men? Well, that's where they're making a mistake. Young fellas is busy thinking about going out nights and thinking about girls, and I'm just thinking about working. <laughs> so if you can't find me a job, I'll find one myself. I do for you. You yes. I mean, what you can do for me, Mac, is what I can do for you. You do something for me? <laughs> like what? Well, how'd you like to sell the place? Yeah, mine, if I get the right price. Who'd be thinking of buying it? Me? <laughs> you? <laughs> well, like I said, things are going so good at the farm, I thought I ought to branch out a little, you see. <laughs> thought I might buy me a hardware store. <laughs> oh, you thought that, did you? <laughs> yep, that's right. Of course, I'd want to work here for a spell to sort of get the feel of the place. And I'd expect to be paid whilst I was working. Amos, you're not figuring on buying the store. You're just figuring on tricking me into giving you a job. A job? Now, what would I be needing a job for? Because I heard you've been walking all over town looking for work. Well, what's wrong with that? Well, nothing. So why don't you just come in here and ask for a job instead of all that talk about buying the hardware store? Well, I just wanted to show you how sneaky I could be so you know we could get along together. Boy, I don't hold a man's hard luck against him. And I don't believe in that nonsense about charity beginning at home. I believe in passing it out when it's needed. When a man's down and out, McGinnis lends a helping hand. Now, it's a part-time job, night. Pays $20 a week plus commissions. I'll take it. When can you start? Already did. I tidied up your window feet. <laughs> Dollars and fifty cents a week. Oh, good. Oh, good. Oh, great boy, it is wonderful. We all found jobs. Well, good, good. Yeah, I'd have been home sooner only had so many offers myself. I had to stop and figure out which one to take. Oh. <laughs> what kind of a job did you get? Yeah, I got myself a good one. A salesman at McGinnis's Hardware Store. You're working for Mac McGinnis? Mm -hmm. Oh, Senor Grandpa, I thought you and Senor McGinnis didn't get along too good. Yeah, that there's putting it mild. Well, the way I look at it, if I got to take money from somebody, I'd rather take it from McGinnis than a friend. <laughs> well, howdy. Name's Amos McCoy. Can I help you? Yes, I need a pipe wrench. I'll take this one. 
Well, fine. Got yourself a fine ranch here. Yes, that should do the job. I'm putting in a little sprinkler system. Oh, yeah? Oh, and I'll need a couple of half-inch joiners. Oh, got them right here. Yeah. Oh, now, wait a minute. You using half-inch pipe, are you? Yes. Well, now, uh, is that why you're buying this ranch? Yes. Well, you don't need a ranch like this. Oh, but I want a good one. <laughs> sure, but you see, not as big. Now, here's a ranch right here. This will do the job just as well. It only costs you about half as much. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> thank you very much. This is a very nice saving. Well, thank you. Glad to wait on you. <laughs> well, I guess you've done pretty good from a first sale, huh? Pretty stupid, if you want to know. Huh? You talked him into spending less money. I know, but he didn't need that big a wrench for the job he was doing. You're not here to help people save money. You're here to help them spend it. Now, look, McGinnis, I don't hold with talking people into buying something they don't need. It just ain't good business. I'm running this store, McCoy, and I'm the one to decide what's good business and what isn't. Now, you're supposed to be a salesman. Now, the next customer that comes in, you sell. You understand? Yes, sir. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, you better have a keg of nails. A whole keg? Better than running out. You can always use nails. Okay. You sure I'll need all this stuff for the job I'm doing? I wouldn't steer you wrong. <laughs> oh, you better have one of those new plastic handled hammers. Uh, makes the job easier. Uh, I've already got a couple of hammers. But, but if you say so. The latest thing. <laughs> oh, uh, excuse me. Uh, McCoy, uh, will you see if you can help this gentleman with something more? Yeah, Howdy. You think I can get you? Well, I think I got about everything I need. Mm -hmm. Twelve four-by-fours, one-by-six siding, three rolls of wires, staple gun, staples. Eighty-three dollars and twenty cents. I, I didn't know farming could be so expensive. Well, of course, that depends on what you're building. Well, I just bought the Simpson place. Oh, I know it well. I'm building me a chicken coop, uh, twenty by forty. Twenty by forty? How many chickens you got? Well, I'm planning to get me a couple of dozen. Oh, you don't need that big a coop. Ten by fifteen would be plenty. <laughs> of course it would. <laughs> Your girl done right it would. And for that, you'd only need one roll of wire. And did I hear you say you was getting 12 four befores? Yeah, for the corner posts and the bracing. <laughs> Why, these are chickens occasion, not tigers. <laughs> Two by fours would be plenty strong enough. And you won't be needing all that lumber, neither. Because you can use the barn for one side of the coop, you see. Say, I could, couldn't I? Okay, I'll use two by fours. Yes. What else you got there? Oh. Yeah, yeah, business picking up a little. <laughs> you know, sometimes all you need is one good customer. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Bye, Jed. And thanks again. You're welcome. <laughs> Uh, I'll have a check for $38.50 when you deliver the stuff in the morning. $38.50? Uh, your order came to eighty-three twenty. Oh, your salesman here showed me how I could get along with less. Oh, I see. Well, good night, and uh, thanks again. <laughs> McCoy, I warned you. McGinnis, I, I just couldn't help myself. Besides, you see how happy he was when he left. And a happy customer is a satisfied customer. And a satisfied customer always comes back. Well, that should ought to make you satisfied and happy. Amos McCoy, you're fired. Fired? You heard me. You're through. And on your way out, put this sign back in the window. Put it back as chef. I quit. <laughs> Well, off to work again. Back to the hardware store. I gotta go, too. I'm gonna be late. Yeah, me too. Night, Night, Night. Just think, another two days, it'll be payday for all of us. Yeah, just think. Well, see you later, after work. Oh, Grandpa, I fixed you an extra piece of pie to take along. You might get hungry later on. Thank you, Keith. And there's a piece in there for Mr. McGinnis, too. Yeah, you never can tell. That old sourpuss might have himself a sweet tooth. <laughs> 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 
store tonight, Grandpa? Things, oh, fine, fine, just fine. Well, Grandpa, you've got hay all over your back. Hay? What hay? This hay. Oh, oh, that hay. <laughs> well, I must have got it down to the store. That's right. I was unpacking a crate of electric fans. You know, they come packed in hay. And when I turned it on, it must have blowed that hay right up under my collar. Oh. <laughs> and then speaking of hay, it's time you was having your milk and hitting it. Okay. Grandpa, yeah. did you sell a lot of hardware tonight? Well, yeah, pretty good, yeah, yeah. A hundred dollars worth? Well, it's Oh, close. now, little Luke, Grandpa's tired. Leave me. Go on, get to bed. Okay, I'm going. Uh, wait, little Luke. Come back here. This time I told you all something. I've been lying. I ain't been working. McGinnis fired me the first night. That haze from the barn out there where I was uh, hiding out evenings so you'd think I was down to the store. What? You was fired? I sure bet it wasn't your fault, Grandpa. Yes, it was, little Luke. Customer come at the store and want to buy something. If I didn't think he needed it. I'd talk about it, buying it. Well, McGinnis wanted me to sell him anything, just so long as I was selling. But I couldn't do that. So, on top of being a liar, I'm just a big bust to boot. Well, this just don't make sense. Sure don't. What it amounts to is he fired you for being honest. Well, it appears like it ain't no way to be nowadays. Honesty, well, sort of gone out of style. You mean, you think it don't pay to be honest? Even if it is what I think, don't you go start thinking it. Because if I ever catch you being anything but honest, you won't be able to sit down till you're old enough to vote. <laughs> Oh, perhaps you don't remember me. I was in here a couple of nights ago. I'm Charles Bradley of the Better Business Institute. The Better Business Institute? Yes. Yeah, here are my credentials. Now I have here a certified check in the amount of $100 for Mr. Amos McCoy. Huh? Yes, he's won our award for being the most ethical salesman of the month. A group of us have been shopping in the area, and my report on Mr. McCoy's forthright and honest manner made him our unanimous selection. Oh, very nice. Uh, very nice. Oh, McCoy's one of my best salesmen. As a matter of fact, that's why I gave him the day off today. Well, I wanted to bring you the news because the reporters and photographers will be here tomorrow. Reporters? Photographers? This will be in the newspapers? Yes. And you'll be given a certificate to hang in your store. And naturally, Mr. McCoy will be here. Will he be here? Oh, oh naturally. Naturally. <laughs> See, see, and your picture is going to be in the papers and everything. Well, I'll be glad. <laughs> it looks like we got us a genuine celebrity in the family. <laughs> see, Grandpa, you've done the right thing. Honesty pays off after all. Senor Grandpa, it's Senor McGinnis. Well, now ain't that sweet. The boss calling on the hip. <laughs> well, leave him to me. I want them all to myself. <laughs> Come in. <laughs> well, Mr. McGinnis, what are you doing out here? Amos, I've come to apologize. Apologize? What for? For firing you. Why, well, you didn't have to apologize for that. You had even right to fire me. No, no, I didn't. <laughs> yes, you did. It's like you said. It's your store, and you got a right to cheat any way you like. Amos, I was wrong. Will you come back to work for me? 
Uh, no, no, McGinnis. Me and you just can't get along together. Yes, we can. I like you, Amos. I like you. <laughs> yes, I do. Will you come back? No. <laughs> Why not? Well, the, I don't have to work. I just committed some money. But you've got to come back. If you don't come back, I'll... You what? I'll miss you. <laughs> Enough to give me a raise? Thirty dollars a week, uh, plus commissions. Well, now, uh, that ain't much of a raise for a salesman who just won his ship of A award from the Better Business Institute. Yeah, well, that's all I... What? <laughs> I... And I'll take that money I just committed. That check for a hundred dollars. <laughs> Amos, you tricked me. <laughs> well, ain't that what you come over here to do to me? But you're supposed to be honest. <laughs> yeah. I just wanted to see you squirm a little. Now, you can keep that raise in salary, because I ain't coming back to work for you. Oh, Amos. But when a miserable specimen like you needs help, well, that's because you're just too girl darn charitable not to lend a hip in hand. <laughs> now, I'm coming to your store, but just for tomorrow. That shows them newspaper fellas wouldn't know you fired me. Thank you, Amos. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Amos. <laughs> You sure told him. <laughs> One hundred dollars. Say, you know, if there's a few more crooks in town like McGinnis, I could go around being an honest man and make myself a god-darn fortune. <laughs> <laughs>